Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the Life Science course, and today we will be dis discussing sponges for our lesson. The objectives for today will be, number one, describe the characteristic of sponges. Number two, explain how sponges get oxygen and food. And number three, how do humans use sponges? What are some common characteristics that all sponges exhibit? Well, first of all, sponges are the simplest of all animal species. They don't have what we would consider to be internal organs like a brain or a heart, um, but they uh, do have some specialized cells, and there are 5,000 species of different types of sponges. According to the fossil record, it does show that sponges, uh, excuse me, sponges were the first animals here on Earth. Uh, and they belong to what we call the phylum or division, phylum periphera. Um, and that's because periphera actually uh, means that uh, this organism is covered with pores. So that word pores uh, kind of looks like or sounds like the first part of the word periphera. And pores are just little small holes or openings that are, are found all over the sponge body. Now sponges live in the ocean, so they're marine animals. And um, some can also live in fresh water, but the majority are found in salt water. And they're found in very warm, shallow, maybe even tropical coastal areas. Now, uh, sponges look like they may be, I don't know, plants because they don't really move and they don't have like an appendage that we would maybe consider to be a sign that it's an animal. But because scientists have found that sponges do not make their own food, they are what we call heterotrophic. That's why they're placed in the animal kingdom and they have their own phylum periphera. So how are sponges different? Um, well, they're different from other animals because they have the asymmetrical body symmetry. Asymmetry just means that there's no specific body arrangement, no body arrangement. They can look any shape or size. They again have no tissue, no organ or organ systems. Uh, they're also described as being sessile animals. And that means that at some point in their life cycle or their lifetime, the adults, the adult sponges remain attached to one place. So they start out as these small, tiny little baby or larva sponges. And as those larva um, grow, they're actually swimming through the ocean to find somewhere to settle. And once they find that place, they stay there permanently throughout their whole adult life. Now sponges look like a cylinder in the sense that they have a large opening at the top and they have, if this was the bottom of the ocean, they have a closed end. Um, and then, of course, all throughout their body, they have these small pores. And these pores are very important because that is where the water rushes through from the water currents in the ocean. And those pores help to collect the materials needed for that sponge to survive. Also, sponges have a structure called spicules. And these spicules are thin, spiny, pointy structures that make up the outside skeleton of the sponge. So these would be considered spicules. Lastly, sponges live in colonies, like little families of sponges. They live together. Here's a colony of three sponges and maybe actually four in this picture here. Now, what do sponges eat and how do they eat? 
Well, sponges don't have legs and arms to go find their food, but what they do have are those pores, and those pores are important because those pores help to filter out the water, uh, fil filter out their food source in the water. So they filter microscopic food particles through their pores. And those food particles could be things like algae, bacteria, protists, other organisms that the sponge can live off of. So they definitely depend on the water currents in the ocean. And also those same sponges not only collect the food, but they also are able to release or get rid of the waste products that the sponges make from their food source. They're carried away through the top opening of the sponge. 